Okay, okay. This is Jay DeBerry with the National Live Skin Association. For those who don't know who I am, I'm one of the coolest guys around in the organization. I got skills and they be jealous sometimes. Today, we're going to talk about live scan fingerprinting workflow processes. Um, regards to ink card fingerprinting or even live scan, it's the same process you got to think about. And when I say workflow processes, pretty much what you can do step by step by step for every single thing that you do regarding your, your fingerprinting business, regarding to when you're going to check your emails, when you're going to answer the phone calls, when you're going to return your calls, when you're going to find a day to be productive, not busy, but productive. But the best way to start each day is, of course, my big J cup right here. Because this is Live Scan Cafe going on right now. For those who got the cups, send us your pictures with you. We add them to the site there for our next upcoming shows. And this is a replay. You can always go back and register for upcoming sessions at livescan.cafe.com. That's livescan.cafe or livescancafe.com for more upcoming events we have here for the um, weekly show. So let's jump in straight into it. I got a couple of bullet points I'm going to focus on. And we're going to touch on those. I'm going to keep this session kind of short. Our last session went a little bit longer than expected, but it was a very good session. It was for the um, Live Scan Cup number eight, I believe. And this is Live Scan Cup session number nine. Number 10 is going to be even better. So let's jump straight into it here. Get some things going out here. Here we go. All right. Tip number one, use a task management system. That could be something as simple as having a, can't show the notes, so if you try to freeze the screen and freeze the session like we have written down, there's top secret notes. But get yourself like a regular tablet and put down some tasks you should be doing on a regular basis when you're having your fingerprint business going on. And this information is good for those who currently have a fingerprinting business and those who think about starting up a fingerprinting business. Every business needs to have some type of task management system. And if you're a solo entrepreneur or you're sole proprietor, you're working by yourself, you're going to need to have a lot more processes, a lot more tasks put in place to effectively run and grow your business there. So first tip is going to be use a task management system. Now, we're not going to go in detail about what type of software to use or what type of pen to use and stuff like that, but just find a way to start writing down a task which you should be doing on a daily basis. Now, I do recommend having something like a software program that you could use. It could be as simple as um, Google has something like Task, or maybe Microsoft has something like Task or software or something you can use on your cell phone. Something that allow you to write down the task that's required to get things done. And as you work through that process, daily, day by day, week by week, month by month, you're gonna go back and streamline it and make it more effective. So by having software, it's easy to move those tasks or those bullet points up and down versus trying to rewrite again on a piece of paper. All right. So right now, if you guys have to have any type of task software that you're using, please share it with us in the comment section. We'd like to share with everybody else because what might work good for your organization might be just as effective for another organization out there too, or perhaps not as effective because they might not be the same level as you're at regarding your business operations. But certain things you might want to write down regarding your task operations, like I mentioned early on, is returning phone calls, responding to emails, sending out emails. That accounting stuff people hate to do all the time, keeping track of your bills like that stuff, that seriously needs to have some type of task management system, especially when it comes to your money. Very important. I'm not a tax preparer, I'm not a tax advisor, but if you know anything about accounting and bookkeeping, you should find some soon to help manage your business the right way. So once again, a task management system is very important. Let's look at number two here. Plan your day out the night before. What I mean by that is, what are you gonna do the next day? The last thing you wanna do is go to the office, sit down and don't have a game plan of what you're gonna do. Are you going to go ahead and try to set up automatically? Are you going to turn your machines on? Are you going to make sure supplies are available? Are you going to see who's coming in that day? Do you have appointment scheduling system to look at? What you going to do first when you get there? What you going to do next when you get there? What you going to do in the customers that are coming to you? Or are you going to them? 
what are you going to do? Do you know where to go? Do you know who's coming into you? Is it going to be for live scan? Is it going to be for ink cards? Is it going to be for notarizations? Is it going to be for DNA testing or drug testing, whatever the case may be? Who's next? Who's next in the line? What you're going to do? So have your plan thought up the night before. And if you have a team, the last thing you want them to do is sit around and do nothing, waiting for you to tell them what to do. They should know what's going on, but some folks need a special motivation to get out their assets to get the job done the right way. So go ahead, have your plan together ahead of time before your day even starts when a person comes to your door or you first open the door for business. Very important. And if you don't plan your day out the night before, at least try to do it the next morning when you start the day. So the first thing in the morning, if you didn't get a chance to get it done the day before, first thing in the morning is writing down what needs to get done and have it prioritized. Prioritize it. So they can do X through Z. Get the ones that's more productive done up first. Everything is important. For those who don't know me, the busy stuff is important too. But that should not be your main priority unless you have to get done a certain day. So your productivity should be top of the priority. The busy stuff, not as a top of the priority. All needs to get done. But once you prioritize that, and from reason you have some help, have them start working on other things while you focus on priority. But get that stuff done. And make sure you take everything done that's on your list that particular day. Now, tip here is when you write down your task, what should be done, you should also time yourself. See how long it's going to take to get each task done throughout the day. And record this stuff on a regular basis, on a daily basis. You want to document your process on a daily basis. If I'm checking emails this morning here or this afternoon, time yourself throughout the day on every single task that you're doing. Now, some folks say, well, I don't have a process yet. I'm just getting started here. I'm not sure how to prioritize things. The best thing to do is what we share with you right now. Document everything that you're doing or your team is doing throughout the day and time it. Say how long it's going to take. What I recommend sometimes, especially if you're getting started off or you want to enhance your current organization, is give yourself 30 minutes of certain priorities and get it done. If you give yourself two hours to return phone to return phone calls with two hours to check the emails, it's going to take you about two hours to do this stuff. Give yourself thirty minutes to go ahead and try to get that particular task done within thirty minutes. Get it done as close as possible thirty minutes. You'd be surprised by repeating that process the next couple of times. You'll get closer and closer and closer to a shorter time frame in getting that particular task done. And that's your whole objective, getting the tax done as quickly as possible and effectively. Focus on priorities first and work your way down the list. But you need to time yourself. It's very important. Now, I'm going to circle back on some other things to mention a little bit early on about um, having someone else do the work for you. If you're growing a live scan fingerprint business, early on you may be able to do it by yourself. But you need to start considering early on your process of somebody giving you a hand. It could be assistant or office manager, where the case may be. You're going to need help down the line, hopefully sooner than later, which is a good thing. It means your business is growing. You need to get some type of assistance down the line to help you grow your business. You're going to get to a point where you're going to be bombarded with phone calls, fingerprinting people, dealing with disputes, dealing with anything you think of where the machine might not be or working right or you got people waiting to get fingerprinted, but the one person you're fingerprinting, they have those unique fingerprints that are hard to take. I call them low ridge characteristics where the fingerprints are so hard, you just can't get it done in 10 to 15 minutes. It might take extra 10 to 15 minutes to get the best prints possible. This is going to happen, especially when you're working by yourself. Dealing with customers who are challenging, and I got more confirmation out there. There's a whole bunch of live scan Karens and live scan Kens out there. Can't mention the name of who they were, but they know who I'm talking about. You're dealing with customers who have poor quality prints. You're dealing with customers who come into your office or 
late or you're going to the location, they're not on time. You got all these different variables right then and there. And you got the people waiting to get fingerprinted. You got the phones ringing and somebody has a quick question also. You need to have a process to get some of the stuff done here. What you're going to do? What you're going to do with certain customers who got a long line waiting or the phone's ringing off the hook? What you're going to do? You need to put a process in place to deal with these situations. Now, if you took a training program in the past, you know different things you should be doing at this point here. But this is just for you guys to understand, to start thinking about it, and what might work good for live scan location A or ink car fingerprinting location B might be the same process you have to do at your organization. So start thinking about this right now. Even before you start fingerprinting, think about what you're going to do every day when they come to office with live scan paperwork. Certain states require you to keep a copy of that. What's your process for that? What's your process to come to with no paperwork? But you need some type of confirmation that it was fingerprinted. What's your process? What's your process to come to you and the paperwork is on a cell phone? And they're going to scroll down like this and want you to look at it. What's your process for that? Are you going to stop what you're doing and read all this stuff on the cell phone? Are you going to touch their cell phone? Are you going to have an email it to you? Are you going to wait for the email to show up? Are you going to reschedule them? What are you going to do? What is your process for all this here? Do you have a scheduling system? Do you have appointment policy? If they don't follow your policy and they come in anyway, what are you going to do? This is just small, everyday things that can happen at your place of business. It could be you have a walk-in setup versus appointment scheduling setup. Ten people show up at the same time. You don't have space for a limited size for folks to get there. What are you going to do? Especially if it's raining outside, you make them stay outside? Just think about things that could happen and most likely they're going to happen anyway. So what are you going to do? Have your policies put in place. Focus on your procedures and tasks. But document every single thing that you do on a daily basis. End of the week, revisit it. Focus on what's important to you and try early on to get that assistance for you. Now, the next question will be, well, how am I going to find somebody to help work out if I'm just brand new by myself? Sometimes the best way to interview people is when they come to you for fingerprinting because sometimes they could be looking for a job somewhere else. Gives you a chance to go ahead. Now, this is a little plug here. We do that stuff from time to time. Um, when they come to you, do like an informal interview without them even knowing about it. Talk to them. See how they behave. Now, I'm not saying to take away your customers from your other clients who sent them over there. But sometimes they might come there for other reasons, looking for work, and they've been unsuccessful. They might be a good fit for your organization. Try it out. See how it goes. Now, I promise you keep the session here short, which I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it only to 15 minutes today, maybe a few minutes afterwards. But once again, this is about live scan fingerprinting workflow. Use a test. Let me go ahead and click the button here. Go back to this one right here. I like to always recap. Live scan fingerprinting business workflow. Okay. We have use a task management system. Plan out your day the night before. If you can't, the first thing in the morning, plan out your day. The very first thing in the morning, plan out your day. Document, 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 document how long it's going to take. How long it's going to take is very important. Get yourself a little cell phone or stopwatch and keep time of all that there. We got a couple of questions popping up here. I'm going to answer one or two of these questions here. So let's see what we have going on right here. Oh, my friend, one of my besties. I am all about creating systems processes. This is a great tip. Thank you for that. Brother got skills. Brother got skills. Appreciate that. But this system here, this discussion is a very short discussion. Just guys to think about it. This is a full blown out session. It could be for hours, hours, because there's so much about processing and workflows. Some folks take it to a point where they're drawing out little diagrams and stuff, different shapes for different reasons. But just one person comes to you and they may have a missing finger. What should they do? Or they come to you 
and all of a sudden you fingerprint them, you ask for the money, and they thought it was free. What can you do to prevent that from happening? What process can you put into place to prevent little things from this from happening? Now, losing a finger is not a little thing. I'm talking about just things you should come across sometime. Our next series is going to be cup number 10, which is a good thing, like a little 10th anniversary for us there. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in detail, but I want you guys' feedback between now and then. So if you listen to a live stream or a replay, leave your comments below and let us know what you think about this. Let us know what tools are you using. And of course, let us know what coffee you have right now. Actually, this is tea, but this is my big J cup right here. Let us know what process you're going to have or what you think about or what questions you have about creating a process. Our training covers this here. I don't care if it's going to be ink card fingerprinting program that we have or the live scan technician program that we have. Our training programs cover this about processing. What you should be doing step by step by step now i'm gonna give myself here two more minutes here with you guys before going ahead and um in the session here but i want you guys to break out the pen and paper i'm gonna show you one process regards to live scan machines what should be doing so let me know when you're ready there you ready good all right when you come to your office for live scan fingerprinting you still be office for that service there the first thing you want to do regarding the equipment is turn it on. Don't wait till you get for a client shows up to turn it on. When you first get to the office, one of the first things you should have somebody do is turn on the live scan device. Because sometimes things like um, updates. Oh, somebody, oh, oh, she's on the roll day. She's ready. Good. Updates. Sometimes when you fingerprint somebody on the live scan device, there might be some type of update in the background. And all of a sudden, your machine shuts off. You don't know about that. Or it could be finished up an update the day before. And when we start your machine this morning, it's going to go ahead and upload all that information. My mouth is kind of dry here. Yeah, I'm just bragging about my big J cup again. Update. So make sure, oops, all the focus in and out. There we go. Make sure you guys turn your machine on when you first get there. Make sure everything's updated. Make sure it's plugged into the wall for the power. Stick in the Ethernet cord. Make sure it has updates with the internet too. Make sure it's plugged in there. And log into the system. Make sure everything is fine. What you don't want to experience all of a sudden when you do your test run at first, the machine doesn't work. Or perhaps the um, live scan device, cover this up here. Is not working properly. What's going on with it? It could be just the power cord, um, the USB port right here, not plugged in correctly, or the cord itself that goes into here is um, short. So always get a chance before the day starts for your clientele is come to your office, turn your live scan devices, do an operational check to make sure everything is fine. You don't want to wait till live when the client comes and realize some issues going on. Things can happen. It happens rarely, but it does happen. And just in case your machine is working fine, but all of a sudden while your fingerprint is not working, sometimes the best thing to do is just go ahead and save what you could save on your device, the fingerprints or the script of data, and restart the system. Just restart the system. That's all I'm going to say for right now for the live scan hacks. Um, just some free information right there. But when you do take the training program and go more in detail, um, about what you should be doing regarding fingerprinting in the process of that to include if you take the ink card fingerprinting processes and the other courses that we have is broken down to a granular part where you should think about step by step by step what you should do. If you have any questions down the line, you know how to reach us, just go ahead and um, visit us at livescanchat.com. That's livescanchat.com. And let me see, can I find this banner stuff here for everybody here? All right, then here we go right here. So get engaged with this. Those interested in learning more about the association, visit us and talk to a member advisor for 15 minutes, no big deal. And we're visiting livescanchat.com. Now we have some new members joined us recently there. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend, Candice. Uh, we've listened to the session later on. Welcome to the family here. And another person named Sheena joined us too. One of my besties referred her over here and she joined up yesterday. So. For those looking at the views, 
Um, wish you a good success out there. Please don't forget about this. Please be safe and always, always, always have fun. Take care, everybody, and enjoy.